Imagine this. You're sitting in your best interview clothes, trying to appear confident and qualified. As your interviewer pours you a glass of water, you resist the urge to nervously fidget. You take a deep breath, knowing you've prepared yourself as best you can for this moment. And then the first question gets asked. So tell me about yourself. You swallow, debating how much to share. And then you muster every ounce of courage you can. Well, first off, I'll be fully honest with you. I have a disability. The interviewer interrupts. What do you mean you have a disability? And in that moment, you know, this interview is already over. I wish I could say that story is totally made up, but the harsh reality for that person and for many others is that they've been immediately disqualified from being hired simply for being brave enough to share about their disability. Tonight, I'm gonna to give you evidence as to why we shouldn't assume hiring someone with a disability will negatively impact the workplace. Inclusive hiring is not about charity. It's about persons of diverse abilities adding genuine value to your company. You'll notice I've just used two terms interchangeably. Disabilities and diverse abilities. I prefer to use the term diverse abilities as it focuses more on the potential of the person rather than the limitations. Now we all know someone living with a diverse ability. Statistics Canada tells us it impacts one in five Canadians over the age of 15. And yet persons with a diverse ability continue to regularly experience stigmatization in securing work. They're 35% less likely to be employed and almost three times as likely to be low income. Now these disparate outcomes are not explained by a lack of uh, motivation or interest in work. This remains one of the most untapped talent pools, one with great potential to address some of the labor shortages that we're currently experiencing. There's an emerging body of evidence um, that is showing us the positive impacts that inclusive hiring can have on the workplace. I want to share with you some of these findings by examining some of the common misconceptions. The first misconception is that persons with a disability tend to miss work more and to leave their position sooner. In actuality, they have a 72% higher retention rate. That's a lot of rehiring and retraining avoided. And 86% of employees with a uh, diverse ability rated average or better in their attendance. Given the opportunity, persons with diverse abilities will often become some of a company's most reliable and most loyal staff members. Another common assumption is that persons with a disability are less productive. Well, the research shows that 90% of persons with a diverse ability performed as good or better than their coworkers without a disability. Adding team members who act, think, and behave outside of your organizational echo chambers could lead to significant quality improvements. There's a number of firms in North America, software firms, who actively recruit individuals on the autism spectrum for their abilities to focus on details and and to see irregularities in various coding languages. And they tend to outperform their neurotypical uh, coworkers. The third and last misconception is that 57% of employers spend nothing on adapting the workplace. Oh, shoot. Sorry, the third and last misconception is that it's too expensive to accommodate um, an employee with a disability. Well, 57% of employers who hire inclusively spend nothing on adapting the workplace. And for those who do, the cost tends to be low. On the other side of the balance sheet, 87% of consumers say they would prefer to give their business to companies who hire people with diverse abilities. 
I've seen the value that persons with diverse abilities bring to the workplace. Little Sprout Cafe is a social enterprise that I helped launch in April of this year. Our mission is threefold, to hire people with diverse abilities, to offer training opportunities, and to be a touch point for the community, actively modeling inclusive hiring. And if that sounds good, wait until you try the food. I want to share with you what we've distilled as three of the key ingredients that have helped make inclusive hiring successful at Little Sprout Cafe. So how'd we do it? Firstly, it started with our leaders. The value of inclusion has been championed by our executive team, and it's become embedded in our corporate culture. Throughout all levels of our organization, there's a shared understanding of the need to establish spaces where people feel they belong, where they're supported in taking risks, and where meaningful contributions are expected from everyone. As a result, our diversely able team members know that they are appreciated as functioning members of the team, not as token symbols of some corporate social responsibility campaign. Another lesson we've learned is be flexible. As we began hiring for the cafe, we wanted to anticipate potential barriers that would prevent applicants from putting their best foot forward. During the interview process, we uh, allowed for flexible interviewing techniques, including allowing in-person and online interviews, uh, allowing support person to join, and altering how questions were communicated. We were also flexible with the hours. In several cases, we took full-time positions and broke them down into multiple part-time ones. For persons, persons with this, uh, diverse abilities, uh, 50, are 52% more likely to work part-time hours. And so we wanted to be flexible about how many people we hired to fill the staffing needs within the cafe. We designed positions with job descriptions, but were ready to alter duties based on who applied and their potential fit within the cafe. This allowed us to capitalize on the strengths of each individual and to maximize the collective potential of our team. While flexibility is essential, our third ingredient is to keep standards high. Little Sprout Cafe has a high bar that it's set for food quality, customer service, and teamwork. For us, actively hiring persons with diverse abilities did not mean that we compromised our vision or our values for any of those. Our customers' expectations about their food don't change, so why should ours? We found that having high but realistic expectations gave the team a goal to aspire to, rather than a low bar to limit them. The outcomes and the business targets that we've set for ourselves, they don't change. However, we are flexible where possible about how our team members get there. In closing, I want to bring us back to our initial story but we're gonna reverse roles this time. You're now the interviewer, and the person in front of you has just shared that they have a disability. What would your first thoughts be upon hearing someone disclose that they have a physical disability, a mental health diagnosis, or an acquired brain injury? Notice any assumptions you start making about their capabilities. Now, don't judge yourself too harshly for what first comes to mind. We are all human. Acknowledge any limiting expectations or biases you are placing upon them. Let's not be content with a label. Let's get curious about the individual and make space for their potential. Together, we will create better businesses and more resilient communities by evaluating people, not based on their diagnoses, but based on their abilities. Thank you.